we have now expressed in terms of the energy density on this mode, omega i, the contribution to the transition amplitude. The fact that all these modes add in, act incoherently means that each one has a shot in producing the transition and the probabilities now must be added. So the way to some probabilities now is the following. If you have a sum over i, of a, the frequencies omega i, of some energy density u of i times any function of omega i, you can replace it by an integral d omega, instead of little omega i's that you're summing, you now integrate over omega the energy density of your radiation field times the function of omega. So instead of having a sum of these things, you now integrate over a continuous variable, and this represents the energy density in the range, this whole thing is the energy density in the range d omega, which is, in that range d omega, the energy range, the energy density is the sum of the energy densities of each of the contributions. So that's what we're going to do here to express um, and to get our transition amplitude. So we'll say that we have the sum over i of p a b i of t equals 8 pi over h squared integral u of omega d omega d a b n omega sine squared of one half omega b a minus omega t. So all the omega i's have become omegas. That's the variable of integration. And this is information about your radiation field. If it's a black body radiation, we gave the formula last time. So this is your transition amplitude, and we have to try to do the integral. There's one i that remained here. So what do we have to do now? Well, it's the, again the kind of usual story. We know that this factor from Fermi's golden rule tends to say Basically, you get only the contribution from omegas equal to omega ba. So whatever else is being integrated, nothing varies as fast as this, and you can take it out of the integral, approximating omega for omega ba. So that uh, is a little more delicate here, so I'll just write an equality here. So it's 8 pi over h squared. I'll take the u at omega b a out of the integral, this factor. And I want to take this one out as well. But this one is a little funny. Um, it's as I change the omega, the polarization of this electric field is going to come in all directions. It's going to come at random. So even for a given frequency omega, there might be many modes of frequency omega that are coming at the particle at different directions. So, and that's exactly what I would expect for thermal radiation, which is truly the case we're doing here, um, incoherent superposition of light. So when I have this and I integrate over omegas, the various omegas, even for a given omega, there might be many lines that correspond to just a different direction because the field comes in all directions. So 
the interpretation is that we can take this out, but we must do an average over all directions of omega. So this factor will go out as dAB dot n, but here we will average over all directions of n. And it's a square here. So this is important because the field comes in all directions. We've taken care of this. Then finally, we have the integral, the omega of the sine squared function. A minus omega. All right. So a couple of things still remain to be done. Um, one thing that I don't think we need to do explicitly again is this integral. We've done it a couple of times. You do a change of variables. The t will go out linearly, and this becomes an integral of sine squared over x squared, which is equal to pi. And uh, so this integral has been done a couple of times. Let me just write the answer to this thing. is 1 half t times pi. It's linear in t. That we've observed, and it's pretty important that it's linear in t, because that means that the probability, you know, we've, we've been writing this thing, the probability of transition is linear in time. Therefore, you can divide by time to get the rate of transition. So we're almost there. Let's uh, put this together. We have. This is the sum of p's, and there's this t there. So the transition rate, w, from b to a is this probability divided by time. So it's going to cancel this time. Then the 2 is going to give a 4. The pi is going to give a pi squared. There's going to be an h squared. There's going to be this factor, dab dot n squared. And there's going to be the u of omega b a. So this is going to be the rate. We've divided by t, the previous result. And there we have it. We're almost finished with the calculation. The rate is here. The only difficulty here is this average. But it's, it's not complicated, in fact, doing this average. It's uh, actually kind of simple. So let's do it. So what is it? It's all the matter of writing things properly here. There is the average of dAB dot n squared. So this is the average of dAB dot n complex conjugate times d a, B, dot, N. So it's good to do this thing because actually you have to face as to what these symbols really mean. D, A, B is a vector with complex components. The electric field is a vector, but it has real components. D, A, B is a vector. Why is it a vector? Because it has uh, a vector index here. It really came from this 
operator over there, D is QR. So it's X, Y, and Z, and each one has matrix elements between states A and B. And with matrix elements between states A and B that are complex uh, wave functions, this can be complex numbers. So in general, this D, A, B is a complex vector, and the star is necessary here. So let's... So this is a number. This, however, is a number. And I took the number star times the number and average. So the dot products can be written as sum. So I'll put here a sum over i and a sum over j. d a b, the ith component, times n i, the ith component. Here, this should be star. And that's the sum over i is the first dot product. d a b j and j, the sum over j is the second dot product. These uh, d's are numbers, so they don't have anything to do with the average that we're doing over different directions. So we have i and j of d i a b star d j a b times the average of n i and j. This average, if you wish, you could simply do it if you don't want to use symmetry arguments to do an average like that. You take a vector parameterize it with theta and phi, and just do the integral over solid angle, and divide by 4 pi. This should give you the same answer. If you're uncomfortable with what we're going to say now, you should do that, because that average just means take the vector n, integrate it over all directions, all solid angles, and average. Um, so what is this? n, i, n, j, I claim this thing is one-third delta i, j. And it's based on the following idea, that the average between n, x, and n, y, by the time you integrate over the sphere, is zero. The average of off-diagonal things don't have averages. Nx with Nx, however, would have an average because it's always positive. Ny with Ny would have an average because it's always positive, and Nz with Nz would have an average. And each one of these three would be the same because there's no real difference between the x, y, and z directions. And therefore, you have three things, and at the end of the day, this average of nx and x plus ny and y plus nz and z is the average of n squared, which is equal to 1, so it should be equal to 1. So the, each one of this nx and x, or ny, ny, or nz, nz, must add up to a total of 1, therefore this is the 1 third. So that's what uh, this is, and uh, if you find this a little funny, uh, you should do the integral and then think about this argument again. So anyway, that's uh, the answer, and therefore we get one-third, and the delta ij establishes a dot product between these two things, so this is the ab vector star dotted with the ab vector. This is a vector complex conjugated because we said the components can be complex. So that's the answer, and most people like to just simply write it as the AB vector squared like that. But it's not just the vector dotted with itself, it's the vector dotted with its complex conjugate. So with this number, the whole formula is now finished, is the final form. The rate for spontaneous transition triggered 
by electromagnetic fields, an incoherent superposition of electromagnetic fields is four pi squared. We get the one third here over three h squared. The AB vector squared u omega b a. And it's a transition rate per atom. We've considered a single atom, so it's transition rate per atom. All right, long derivation, but uh, a lot of physics in it. Uh, a transition between discrete states got convoluted with an integral of the stimuli as it comes in and produce a nice uh, result in the style of Fermi's golden rule. Um, Griffiths called that, calls that a Fermi golden rule. Uh, he works with SI units and there's epsilon zeros and different numbers of pi's there. Um, Sorry, uh, we've checked this is consistent and uh, <laughs> we can't do much about that. 